Welcome back, everybody, to another thrilling episode of Thrive Street Program with Coach 2J. This is your host, Jeremy Jones. We're talking about week 38, Tuesday, September 17th. So for our practice context, we want to make sure people will understand uh, recovery breathing during the rest. And so uh, um, this is something that people... Um, should understand as a skill is that um, we want to make sure we're taking deep breaths where we start with the uh, the belly and then we fill the rib cage and then the and then the shoulders so it's going to be a three-stage breathing technique as much as we can we want to be breathing in through the nose um, and out through the mouth if we can do in through the nose out through the nose that's also going to drop the heart rate it's also going to calm the nervous system um, there's another there's another kind of recovering breathing method, but this is usually done for something that can be done after class, um, where you take a, you know, a bench or a box, and you have people put their legs up, and they lay down on it, and they put their arms at their sides. Um, this is also another really good way to, uh, to get people to rest. Now, um, just experimenting with different uh, heart rate monitors and things, you'll notice that uh, when people lay down, their heart rates will, will drop back down significantly, um, which is really good, especially if you're practicing this recovery breathing, you know, doing corpse pose, like I think is what they call it in yoga. Um, but as soon as they stand back up again, the heart rate's going to jump right back up again. Um, but, but what we can do is, uh, uh, is use some of these uh, breathing techniques to help to help calm the body before before the next round, and so um, the uh, what we do know is that breathing through the nose also releases more nitrous oxide, which is actually a really effective um, pre-workout ingredient that they put in a lot of pre-workout um, supplements because it does help recovery and performance. And uh, in fact, even even uh, making uh, humming noises as you go through your nose has actually been shown to increase nitric oxide. Um, so I, you know, if you if you want to have people walking around making <clears throat> or <clears throat> noises, uh, you can do that. But that's actually probably one of the reasons why uh, monks discovered that, that doing that, uh, making that that vibration through the nose actually does release more nitrous oxide. Um, but mainly what we're looking for is uh, nasal breathing, um, belly rib, ribs, shoulders, and then uh, shoulders, ribs, belly, so they're getting those full deep breaths. We've got our <clears throat> dynamic warm-up option. Um, we've got that Jefferson curl, and just remember that this is, this is designed mainly as a diagnostic tool to um, check to make sure they don't have any major issues. We want to be able to articulate all of our spine. It's not a movement we're necessarily going to try to strengthen, um, but it's also a good way to explain to people like this is basically how you would never deadlift or pick anything up heavy. You would never use um, this curling motion. It's really more of a stretch and a prehab rehab movement. Um, then we've got some hip activation because uh, we are doing some uh, kettlebell swings and some running. So we want to make sure you know people's hips are hips are feeling good. Uh, then we're going, uh, we're going to skip all the skill practice warm-up and everything, mainly because we've got some, some kind of advanced movement. So we've got rope climbs. We want to make sure we've got people dialed in on which progressions they should be using on the rope climb. Um, remember that it's not always just rope laydowns. You know, one of my favorite versions in the, uh, the rope climb video on YouTube, uh, make sure you check out my YouTube channel, um, is, uh, where we do, where, where we hang a short rope off the pull-up bar. And then we have people, they actually hold the pull-up bar and then they practice their feet um, that's a, that's my second worst, uh, drawing ever, <laughs> but, um, basically that they're, they're, um, they're going to hang on the pull-up bar so their grip doesn't get tired. And then they're going to practice using their feet on the, uh, uh, on, on this. I'm going to draw like that and then we're going to put their head here, shoulders. Yeah. So they're basically just practicing the foot lock technique and doing a rope assisted pull up. And, uh, um, that's another good variation. That's not just a rope lay down. So some people, you know, rope lay downs are, are getting kind of old. They might be ready to practice this. Um, you can have them, um, um, you can have them sit on a box and practice this. Um, this is usually good for skill practice days. So again, they're, they're leaning back and their arms are here. And then this one, they can hold the rope. Um, but the rope's going to come here, and they're just practicing locking their feet on the rope um, and practicing getting that technique with their feet so they can get confident. And they practice standing up and standing up on the rope and taking their weight up. Um, uh, but the rope is a pull-up version. Is people who have mastered this, then now they can hold the the uh, pull-up bar, which is a lot easier on the grip and the hands. Now, the general as a general rule, um, uh, most people I would just do uh, five rope assisted pull-ups for every. 15 foot rope climb, which is, which is going to be enough. And then the, the idea is, is that with each rope assisted pull up, they should unhook their feet and rehook their feet. So they actually are practicing the foot technique and they're not just sort of doing like a, like a squat on the rope, so to speak. Then we're going to do some, some heavy jerks. So again, you want to make sure people are dialed in and they're not, uh, um, 
uh, that they're that they've got their technique down on their jerks, and then of course single arm kettlebell swings. Now this is 20 single arm kettlebell swings. This is going to be grippy, right? So we, we're doing a grip movement, not so much grip movement, but the wrists will be flexed because of the front rack position. Then we're doing a, another grip movement, so people's grips are going to get tired. Um, but then we have a longer run, so this run's going to take three, four, five minutes, um, and then we rest. So people's grip should be rested before the next set of rope climbs, and that's that's uh, designed. Um, on purpose. Now the uh, the single arm kettlebell swings, these are Russian height, which want to make sure people aren't letting their shoulders roll forward, internally rotated, we want to keep their shoulders back, and of course they're, they're back flat. Then, um, now if you don't have enough rope, rope stations, you know, you might have, you know, two or three actual ropes, and then you might have, you want to make sure people have maybe, uh, uh, you know, two or three additional sort of uh, short ropes, you know, that people can use, then this would be really easy to do even with a large class. You're just going to send people in waves. So just have people, it should take about a minute to do these rope climbs. Um, uh, so then you can send people in in waves of of uh, uh, every minute. If you want to give a little bit more buffer, you could say every two minutes. Um, but with all these other movements and the rest, you, you know, you could do three, maybe even four waves and people wouldn't, won't run into each other. Um, and get and get stuck um, but because there's three rounds we do want people to push their pace on the run so make sure people understand you know these movements are sort of more of a you know we go from advanced skill down to a little bit more basic and then at the run they can really push themselves if they want that in, if they want a little bit more intensity and um, we did do the team version because uh, we've been doing the team uh, usually team version on Tuesday or Wednesday so it's kind of a fun version especially if you don't have enough ropes um, you're gonna do uh, uh, you know uh, have half as many ropes required because you're doing partner partner workout and it's going to be you know rope climbs per team jerks um, um, uh, it says both one person at a time that doesn't make sense <laughs> um, uh, one person we're going to do jerks one person at a time um, so it's 10 jerks one person at a time but then we're doing the kettlebell swings that each have their own kettlebell and then both partners uh, run 800 meters together um, but uh, that's it for today guys thanks a lot and thrive on